Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Android box with a brand new ARM chipset. And it's been a while since we've taken a look at one of these on the channel, mainly because there haven't been any new CPUs released until now. The box we're going to be taking a look at in this video is known as the X88 Pro 20. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM and the brand new RK3566. This is a new chipset to the market. I've been really trying to get my hands on it. And we will see more of these in the future, especially in single board computers. But as it sits right now, the only thing I can get my hands on are Android boxes powered by this chipset. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. This one here is a very plain Jane box. As you can see, they didn't go all out with RGB or anything like that. But it does have gigabit Ethernet, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, and a micro SD card slot. Along with the X88 Pro, you're also going to get your 5 volt, 2 amp power supply. This does come with a US wall adapter. We're also going to get a 6-foot HDMI cable and the remote itself. Again, kind of plain Jane. There's nothing special going on here with this remote. So over here, as you can see, we have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, our micro SD card slot, round back, our power input, optical audio, full-size HDMI, and gigabit Ethernet. When it comes to the specs of the X88 Pro 20, for that CPU, we have that RK3566. This is a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G52 2EE, and this does support Vulkan right out of the box. We have 8 GB of RAM with this version, but they also make one with 4 GB of RAM. 64 GB of internal storage, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and they claim this will do H265 8K at 24 FPS. It'll also do 4K60, and this box here is running Android 11. I do have to mention that if you can afford an 8K television right now, don't buy a cheap box like this. Buy something that really supports 8K. This is kind of a gimmick if you ask me. So before we get into testing, the very first thing I wanted to do was a quick tear down. I really wanted to get in here and take a look at that new RK3566 and actually see how they have the RAM set up in this. Since they claim this has 8 gigabytes of RAM, I'm wondering if they have a single chip or multi-chips, maybe running in dual channel. There's no external screws on the bottom, it just kind of has these little clips and you can pop it right off. And right off the bat, I'm already seeing two RAM chips on the bottom here. I'm wondering if this is running in quad channel, so what I need to do now is go ahead and get the board out of here. There's three screws holding this into the top half of the shell. And once those are removed, this should slide right out. As you can see, we got a heatsink on top of that CPU, and there's two more RAM chips up here, plus the 64 gigabytes of internal storage. They do offer these up to 128. So if this truly has 8 gigabytes of RAM, we have four 2 gigabyte modules on the board running in quad channel. And uh, yeah, just as I thought, they've kind of glued this down, so I need to grab my heat gun real quick, put a little heat on it, and it should come right off. And there we have it, the all-new Rockchip RK3566. I did run the numbers on the RAM chips, and sure enough, there are two gig chips in here, but it's DDR3, so that will slow down that GPU. In the future, if I can find one of these boxes with DDR4, I will review it, but right now, this is what we have, so let's see how this thing performs. Alright, so uh, here's my second boot. I've already gone through, installed a bunch of applications from Google Play. We do have full access to the Play Store. It's running Android 11. I'm not a big fan of the interface they're using here, but we are running at 4K60. This is a 4K BenQ monitor, so we can get a real good look at 4K video playback on this device. So yeah, going into this, I had a good feeling that we wouldn't have good Widevine support, and this is sitting at level 3, so when it comes to apps that need Widevine to go HD, like Netflix, it's just not going to do it. It's not a Google certified box, and that's one of the really big downsides of picking up these cheaper Android boxes. Our security level for Widevine is L3. But still, we're going to check out some 4K playback from YouTube and see how this thing can handle it. I'll just load up this video here. Stats for Nerds is on. And uh, as you can see, we're not quite getting true 4K out of YouTube either. Our viewpoint is 1080. This is set at 4K, and it's just not going to display real 4K on this screen, possibly due to app versions or Widevine certification. So yeah, we're kind of stuck at 1080p right here, and I've seen this a lot on the cheaper Android boxes. Even though we can select 4K from within YouTube, our viewpoint is still only running at 1080p. And we're getting a few drop frames here. I mean, it's definitely not horrible, and if I didn't have stats for nerds on, I'd never notice it. But yeah, these are really marketed as 4K video playback devices, so let's check out some native 4K playback from the internal storage or an external SD card. 
And for this, I'm going to use the built-in video player. I've already transferred a couple 4K videos over to the internal storage, so let's go to my download section. First one here, 4K 60fps. Our format is MP4 and our codec is HEVC. And this is HDR. You should auto, there we go. Down in the bottom right hand corner of this monitor, it automatically went to HDR, so we do have HDR support on this unit. And yeah, it definitely looks really good on this monitor here. We are truly at 4K on the monitor and everything. And uh, there's just no way for me to set up kind of a frame counter here to see if we're dropping anything. But the way it's playing right now, I really wouldn't notice it if we were. Let's move over to the next video. It's a higher bit rate, still HEVC, 4K 60. And this is 85 megabits per second instead of 64. HDR again. And yeah, this new little chipset is handling 4K video playback really well, given this is native playback from the internal storage. But, you know, I have no doubt to believe if this supported Widevine, which is definitely a big letdown because it doesn't, we could do 4K from Netflix and everything else. Okay, so with video playback out of the way, it's time to move over to some benchmarks, native Android gaming, and emulation. I'm really excited to see how this handles our favorite emulators. So first up for the benchmarks, we have Geekbench 5, and they're not looking too high, but when it comes to these cheaper Android boxes, this is on par with the S905X3. We're actually seeing a bit of a higher single core score out of it, and dead on with that multi. Next on the list, we have some OpenGL performance, Slingshot Extreme coming in with a 528. If you benchmarked your phone right now, you're going to get a much higher score, but keep in mind, these are much lower end chipsets. I also went through and tested the new Vulkan benchmark in 3D Mark. We got a 250, and finally, and 22, which was actually pretty impressive, but these scores do fluctuate with newer versions. We scored a total of 131,296. So with those out of the way, now it's time to test out some native Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft, and by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. We're at eight chunks with fancy graphics off, and with settings like this, it's not that bad, but we're still experiencing some frame dips. Uh, I know it's kind of really hard to tell right now, and there's no way for me to display the frame rate, but as you can see, it does get a bit choppy when you start moving faster. Here we have Real Racing 3, and this is one of those games that I test a lot on these cheaper Android devices, and this is running really well. It seems to be running much better than the S905X3, but then again, I mean, you could chalk this up to game optimizations from the developer themselves. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have PSP using PPSSPP. I was really impressed going into this game. We're actually at 3x resolution, no frame skip, and it's running at 60. This is really great performance for a low-cost Android box. But this doesn't mean that it's going to run all PSP games at full speed, because as soon as I moved over to one of the harder ones to run, Chains of Olympus, it fell right on its face even at 1x resolution with all the hacks on. I'm using the Vulcan back in here, and it does perform better with Vulcan, so uh, I wanted to turn frame skip on just to see what we could do here. And with frame skip on, instead of running at 60, this should be running at 30, and we can't get a steady 30 out of it either. So with PSP out of the way, I wanted to move over to Dreamcast. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2 using the Flycast core inside a Retro Arch. We're right on the edge of 60, and to tell you the truth, it is playable. If I didn't have that frame counter on, it feels like full speed to me. Now when it comes to Android boxes and Android phones, the main Dreamcast emulator that I love using is ReDream from the Google Play Store, but uh, everything that I tested was very, very slow, even at the lowest resolution with frame skip on. There is a lot more stuff that I like to test on this box, but I'm running into compatibility issues, and I'm not sure if it's just due to the firmware that I'm using on this box right now, which is up to date as of making this video, or just Android 11 in general, because when trying something out like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas from the Google Play Store, it just goes black screen on me and crashes. When it comes to N64 emulators, I can't access any of the storage, internal or external, so I can't even load any games up. And I've just run into a lot of compatibility issues with native Android games and emulators on this thing so far. 
So hopefully in the next few weeks, I can find some new firmware that might fix some of this stuff up and I will do a retest on it or just pick up another box with DDR4 just to see how this thing can really perform. But the biggest letdown on this machine right now is no Widevine support. You're going to be stuck with standard definition video streaming apps and there's a lot of boxes on the market right now with the S905X3 that do support Widevine and you can get HD or even up to 4K with Netflix. So in my opinion, it would be a pass right now until the firmware gets better or some more optimizations with this chipset. But with the performance I just saw out of this box, I really wasn't that impressed. I mean, we're on par with that S905X3, which has been on the market for a little while, and there's lots and lots of those boxes floating around for a lot cheaper than you can pick one up with the RK3566. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will be getting in some more devices powered by this same chip running different operating systems. So uh, we can kind of really compare this against the S905X3 and the X4. If you're still interested in picking one of these boxes up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.